If you're struggling with Jira Advanced Roadmaps, then this is the perfect video for you. Are you tired of manual backups when it comes to Jira Cloud? If you've ever tried to backup Jira Cloud, then you know that it's not the most intuitive thing in the world. Well, let me introduce you to Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud. This app is made by my good friends over at Rewind, and it basically automates your backups in Jira Cloud. Now, it takes a few minutes to set up, and after that, you can enjoy manual or automated backups, and your data will never be lost ever again. Use the link in the description below to start a free trial. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, do remember that this is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series, so do make sure that you take a second here to support the channel, and all you gotta do is smash that subscribe button totally free for you takes a second and it really does help the channel grow tremendously so take a second here help us hit our goal of 10,000 subscribers let's talk about Jura advanced roadmaps and some of the struggles or frustrations you may be having when you're using this feature or functionality for the very first time. Now, I do need to remind you that Jira Advanced Roadmaps is a premium only feature. So if you're not in Jira Premium, you're gonna wanna get to premium in order to take advantage of this. But let me paint a little picture for you. The Advanced Roadmaps capability, as the name implies, advanced, is a pretty advanced thing to do. Now, I have a popular video that everybody seems to be liking that I kind of walk you through how to use the advanced roadmap. So make sure you go watch that video as it is going to give you a tremendous amount of insight into how to use these advanced roadmaps. But let's assume that you were a little bit more proactive and you're like, hey, I just want to see some samples. I want to see how to use this. Well, Atlassian is currently rolling out a new feature to their plans, which is interchangeable with advanced roadmaps that I wanted to highlight in this particular video. So let's jump into Jira and I'm gonna show you this cool new little subtle yet I think pretty helpful functionality that is coming to a Jira near you. If not, it's already probably available in your Jira. So let's take a look. Okay, so if you go to your plans, again, if you're a Jira premium, it's the only people that are gonna see this. So if you don't see this plan section here, hate to break your heart, but you don't have either the premium or enterprise version, you're gonna have to be on either premium or enterprise to see this. So full disclaimer, okay? But once you click on this plans, uh, you're going to see your recent plans. This is familiar if you've ever used the advanced roadmaps. Um, you'll be able to create your share teams, view all plans, create a plan, which is how you make more plans. But now, now you get this new option called create sample plan. And so I can click on that and give it a name. And as you can see here, so when I click on that create sample plan, it's going to tell me that see all that advanced roadmap has to offer by creating an interactive sim sample plan. Experience how its features help you create high level plans that span across multiple projects. Plans are created from issues in the boards and projects so in order not to pollute your existing Jira software data. They're gonna create a mock board and a create a mock project on your site. Don't worry, these won't impact any other planning data and you can delete these once you're finished. So basically, this is kind of interesting. Atlassian is gonna create us a sample Jira project and a sample board so that we can have mock data in order to then visualize what this data looks like inside of the advanced roadmap. So they have a link here that you can click on it. So to learn more about advanced roadmaps, highly recommend you click it and check it out if you've never used the advanced roadmaps before, and then just give it a name. So I'm just gonna leave the default, I don't really care. Click that button, and now we're gonna watch a little bit of paint dry. So while that's happening, a word from our sponsor. As a Jira admin, we've all been there before. Our users go in and hit delete on an issue, and even though Jira tells them, hey, once you delete this, it's gone. It's gone forever and there is no undoing it. And yet they still click on that red button and that Jira issue is deleted. Only moments later to have a change of heart and then ask you as a Jira admin to, hey, can you restore that issue that I just deleted? So you know that that's really not possible, but let me introduce you to Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud, an app made by my good friends over at Rewind. Now you'll be able to restore deleted issues. So even though your users don't follow the warnings that Jira gives them, rest assured that using Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud, you'll be able to bring back those deleted issues. Use the link in the description down below to start a free trial. And we're back from our little sponsored break. Do make sure that you try out their app in the Elastic Marketplace, start a free 30-day trial, and most importantly, leave a review. You doing this will show our sponsors the support and the power of the Elastic community. 
So go show them some love. So here we are. This is Atlassian sample plan. First time I'm seeing this for the very, very first time. Never used this before. Kind of curious how they kind of structure their things. But immediately the first thing that catches my attention is that they break things up by team. And so that's that's a really good way of looking at things. And if you have questions about, well, how do they come up with these teams? Well, there's a team section over here in the navigation. You can click in there and you can add teams and manage your shared team. So that's how you're gonna do that. And as you can see here, this is where you can manage your capacity. So this is a great way if you've ever struggled with capacity planning in Jira, you're gonna to wanna to use the advanced roadmap so you can assign your team points and then be able to take advantage of them in the timeline. So going back to the timeline over here, we can see that we have our epics, uh, we can expand to our stories. And so just going to keep this open real quick for a second here because I do want to zoom out a little bit. I want to show you what I'm looking at here. This is interesting. So Atlassian has already basically created a bunch of epics and stories for us. They've given them some priorities, assigned them over to a sprint, and given everything some story points. We can expand the team so we can see which team was responsible for this item. And we can see the releases and see that Atlassian didn't actually put anything in a release. Now you can create a release. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, this is going to be something I, I kind of, I would have thought at Atlassian, but maybe this is a miss in my opinion, they should have put some releases here because to get the full effect, um, I would have I would have included releases in my sample plan. But anyways, this is what you see here. And then over here, this is where things get interesting. I'm going to collapse all these fields and we now start to see all the data. So you can see that this story doesn't have an end date. Uh, we do have a couple of stories here that do have end dates and they belong to a specific sprint. Uh, we see this rolled up date here, which is going to be a roll up of all of our children, um, but nothing, no, no end date in sight. Um, we also see these sprints here. So we're going to be able to see each sprint uh, along here. So this is kind of interesting that they are pre-planning these sprints. Now, I typically wouldn't do this. I don't normally recommend that you, I, I guess they're not really pre-planning, right? But I wouldn't be thinking that far out. I, I, I mean, it makes sense, right? You're in an advanced roadmap. And the whole point of the roadmap is to see the road ahead, but it's not agile, right? Which is really kind of like an elephant in the room that I want to address here is when you're in these advanced roadmaps, you kind of start leaving agile behind a little bit. And you you focus more on like the, the waterfall portion of your project, which kind of breaks my heart, but kind of makes me excited because most teams aren't true agile, right? So all the pure agilists in the, in the chat here are going to basically blow up the chat so please do because it does help the channel grow but just know that when you make the commitment to come over to the dark side to come over to these advanced roadmaps you are kind of subtly leaving agile behind and focusing more on just project management if you will so we, we we're less concerned about being right in agile and more concerned about from a project management perspective what does this all look like so i actually did not know that your sprints were visible here so this is really interesting but yeah, this is this is kind of a cool plan. As you can see, everything here has a bunch of epics and stories. And before we leave off of this, right, so you can see that they even added some subtasks here. And all these dates are rolled up, right? And you can see uh, all the dependencies on how these are all mapped out. And I'm actually curious, now that I'm talking about dependencies, what does the dependency report look like? Well, as you can see, we can kind of zoom in here a little bit. And you can see how all these dependencies are basically tied to each other. You can see the dates that they're adding. So this one's adding a 14 day block and you can pan around and just see um, all the negative and positive effects of these dependencies. So this one's clearly a, a 14 day block here. Not, not good at all. But yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting that last one gives us just a way to kind of visualize what this is supposed to look like. Anytime you see red, that's no bueno. Red dependencies basically mean that you're you're going to be late. You're going to be bad. It's it's not going to help you. And and yeah, so let's actually change the view though. I, I kind of want to come over to basic because that's the view that I'm usually used to. I usually just look at top down. So as you can see a little bit simpler view and you can just see all the different dates that they've put. Now, before I end this video, I, I am curious now. So they've created a project on my behalf. I want to go look for that project. I want to see uh, which project they actually made see if it's in uh, so here it is sample scrum project a is what they created and it's, it just does it for us and if we click into it you're going to be able to see basically all the statuses the backlog of all the work that we saw and here's here's what i was talking about right like most agile teams won't go out 13 14 16 20 20 sprints into the future most teams won't work that way right 
Most teams will literally only be one sprint at a time. So this is interesting that Atlassian kind of promotes that. Not necessarily an agile best practice, not a practice that I would promote. So interesting that they went that route. But again, it does really help drive the point because now you can see all the different sprints. Now the dates here, this is interesting. So the dates that they put into the epics because they're all rolled up dates and, and I, you can tell that they're all rolled up dates because when I go and look at my sample plan, the epics up here don't have the dates, right? So if I switch back to a uh, sprint capacity view that they had, you'll notice that these are all grayed out like this because they're rolled up. That means that they are inheriting the value from the children. And so as I as I expand these epics and these stories, you'll notice that these, these dates are the ones that are gonna dictate the epics. So because they do that, the basic timeline over here in the project is not gonna show me any dates because it's inherited. And that inheritance and that roll up is only an advanced roadmap feature. Anyways, it's kind of an interesting video, right? I just wanted to show you a demo of their sample project. Not really sure how I feel though. Like I kind of feel like it, even though the advanced roadmap is a bit overwhelming, I kind of feel like I wouldn't go down this route. I wouldn't use a sample project mainly because it doesn't really explain much to me. I can kind of see the decomposition. I, I, I kind of like that it at least shows me like good epics. And within those epics, it goes, shows me some good stories and stuff like that. And, and if anything, I got confirmation that the way I do my epics and my stories is great because so many people out there, especially all your agile purists, right? They're trying to see that their stories are written. Uh, as a user, I want to do this for that or whatever. So this kind of just confirms and validates that the approach that I take in explaining and educating folks on how to use Jira is actually pretty much in line with what Atlassian does here. But there's definitely some misses. There's definitely some gaps. I would have added some releases because when you are talking about project management, you got to have milestones and releases in, in play. So kind of a miss there. But overall, I don't know that it would help anybody other than to just get some validation. I think ultimately the best way if you do want to use the advanced roadmaps is to just start a new one and just fiddle your way through. You're going to learn a lot more because I don't know what to do with this project. Like I, I mean, I can kind of visualize me just moving things around, but ultimately like I, I think it's not going to be something helpful. I, I wouldn't, I would never use this project in a real scenario, even to just teach myself, right? Just, I would rather go and create stories and, and kind of figure it out and stumble upon it my, my own. But anyways, to each their own, this is now available. This is a new feature, something that Atlassian is slowly rolling out. So let me know in the comment section down below if you have it already, if you've given it a try and let me know your thoughts and opinions, right? I'm obviously a different type of person. I use Jira 12 hours a day. And so um, I'm coming in from a different perspective, but maybe you're new. And if, if you found this valuable, I do want to know about it. Let me know in the comment section down below. Is your company looking for a compliant backup solution for Jira Cloud? Then look no further than Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud made by my good friends over at Rewind. Rewind is proudly SOC2 compliant and data is encrypted in transit and at rest using TLS 1.2 and AES 256. Crush your security and compliance requirements and get started with a free trial of Rewind Backups for Jira Cloud. Use the link in the description down below. And that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I need to remind you that this is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series. So you smashing that subscribe button is more important than ever. Help us get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of summer. And we can only do that if you smash that subscribe button right now. Drop a like, add a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need